Um, so they were presumably stabbed. Um, Detective Steve Spingola was asked to investigate the Parkway murders. Uh, as a private investigator, he believes that the murders of Kathy and Rebecca were not related to the other murders uh, at all and are, in fact, connected to a double homicide that occurred in Shenandoah National Park in 1996. Young couple Julie Williams, 24, and Lolly Will. Ooh, that's a rough last name. That's how you know this is fucking unscripted. Um, Lolly Winans, there we go, 26, were camping in the park over Memorial Day weekend. When they did not return home, they were reported missing. Their bodies were found on June 1st. They'd been bound and gagged, similar to Kathy and Rebecca. Their throats had also been slit. Spingola believes that the two sets of murders were hate crimes committed by the same perpetrator. So going, going back, going back just a second. So let's, let's throw that in there in case you didn't catch that at the beginning. Kathy and Rebecca were a couple. So again, couple. And Spingola here is tying these to another set of murders nearby um, of Julie and Lolly. Again, guessed it, couple. So he, he's going down the hate crime motive for these two and saying that they're not connected to the others. Uh, despite those theories that the crimes may not be connected, many still believe that the, co- the Colonial Parkway murders were the work of a serial killer. Over the years, the police have questioned over 150 suspects in connection to these four cases, but all have been cleared. In 2018, there was a Facebook page created, Colonial Parkway Murders, which you can go check out if you want to, which is run by Kathy's brother, Bill Thomas, revealed that DNA had been found at three of the four crime scenes, which could potentially build a conclusive link uh, and could ultimately lead to an arrest. Hair that had been found in Kathy's hand and a biological sample found on Robin have never been tested, but with the advances in DNA technology and the re, the, the new kind of all the DNA crap that's been going on, I've been looking at those too. I'd love to hear from you if you've experienced any of those like, you know, not to catch a, you know, not to catch a predator, catch a serial killer here, but <laughs> that's a golden state. That might be a story for later. Um, but looking at those like kind of like, you know, the DNA, where'd you come from kind of sort of things. But they're basically saying that with all these advances in stuff, then there's a good chance that we might finally be able to connect these things. We might finally be able to put a dent in what actually happened. So if, if you haven't pieced that together yet, um, with all the kind of super duper hints that we've been dropping or I've been dropping, um, cold case unsolved so why hasn't the killer been caught it just look at the complexity of this fucking case and a lot of in, with certain investigators they're still to the point of trying to debate as to whether they're not connected and just think about national park all these long expanses like there's obviously no witnesses there's nothing like that happening um but it's just it's just the complexity of the murders and just backtrack and take a look at the whole gruesome spectacle. And we'll just draw some broad assumptions, but there were either multiple killers or a singular lone wolf that was rather adept uh, and elastic for changing and molding their MO on the spot to kind of create the logistics that they needed for their particular set of victims. All the victims were from different, different backgrounds, different demographics, making a profile next to impossible. All the victims were killed with different meth, meth, not messages, methods, stabbing, strangulation, gunshot wounds. None of them had been robbed. None of them had been sexually molested. Just completely leaving investigators just, just dumbfounded. Just what WTF, right? Did this is one way. This is one way. Shot, stabbed, strangled, just kind of molding themselves. Whoever this person or these people were, it's just like, what the fuck? What the fuck? You know, and finally, just the scope of the geographical area made this spree just near impossible to set up like, you know, like an area, right? A lot of times you'll look at these serial killers and be like, oh, there's one here, there's one, there's one here. They're probably somewhere in this bubble, right? That, that, that killer is living somewhere in this bubble or at least traveling and then hunting in this area so he can put a hyper focus on this area. This, this fucker was just all over the place. You just completely ruled out stakeouts, completely ruled out any of that kind of sort of stuff. Um, only thing that they really had to go by currently is circumstantial DNA, which at the time, like, like, let's roll back here a little bit. We're looking at like the mid, late eighties, early nineties, like DNA is not really a fucking thing yet. Right. It's, it's not really, not really got its legs underneath. It's not really catching any air with its wings. Um, and other than that DNA, there's just, there's not a lot of similarities that can really pull this thing together other than like couples getting killed. And just by, it seems like just me, my 
faint understanding of it is just kind of the way the bodies are found, kind of that like, there's complete lack of motive. You know, there's always it looks like there's something always going on with the clothes. They're always not robbed, but it's a needle in a haystack. It's just absolutely a needle in a haystack. Um, nevertheless, there are some stu- suspects. So Fred Atwell is a former def- former deputy sheriff that was active during the investigation in 1986. Fred was considered something of a hero when he uncovered a slew of photographs leaked from the FBI's office in Norfolk. He became a well-known whistleblower, and thanks to his action, the FBI was put under the proverbial microscope. Since then, 62-year-old Fred has had numerous encounters with the law, including a larceny charge, 100 bucks. I don't know, that seems like not much of anything. Fred was also very vocal about the case to the point that he held strong opinions on who the killer was. To the FBI, he was a suspect. To the victim's families. He was a patsy. Fred died in 2018, and whatever secrets he might have had, he took them with him to the grave. So the three killers, Steve Spigola, the guy that we're talking about, former Milwaukee homicide detective, he investigated the murder on behalf of the family as a PI, as a private dick. His investigation came to the startling conclusion that the murders were committed by multiple assailants and aren't tied together at all. So Thomas and Dowski's were a hate crime motivated by the couple's lesbian relationship, as we kind of mentioned. Um, William and Wenis were also a hate crime, no doubt perpetrated by the same killer. Lauer and Phelps might have been a settlement of scores, and it was carried out by a professional. While Nobling and Edward were murdered following a robbery, in Spagola's eyes, there was just no serial killer. They were all freaking separate. Uh, and then finally, the rogue spook theory. F- one of the most bizarre theories of the murder states that the killer's identity was, in fact, a rogue CIA operative. The Virginia State Police did a casual investigation during the panic of Camp Perry and its soldiers. So basically, it's like, okay, this fucking rogue spook theory, there's all kinds of fucking panicky shit going on. Everybody's fucking worried. Obviously, this sounds like a serial killer. So the VSP, the Virginia State Police, are like, okay, let's check out the soldiers at Camp Perry, make sure that it's not one of these dudes, gals, people. Um, it really ratcheted up the media coverage when they got a hold of the fact that the, that Camp Perry is a training facility for the CIA. So rumors, legends, all that fucking folklore got created right there and started hitting the headlines. Um, despite the continued efforts and media frenzy, the murder seemed to compel. There's little to no traction on the investigation. So it's just not really, there's nothing. There's nothing. This case is still cold and there's a lot a ton an absolute ton of theories and ideas and are they connected are they not connected what the fuck is this what the fuck is that right (laughs) and all of them maybe other than like the rogue spook theory and uh, who knows stranger things have happened stranger fucking things have happened but it's still a cold case to this day the fact that there were all these people slain is is a really, really scary story and really sad and really tragic and really gruesome, especially with the method and manner in which they were murdered. You know, going back to the first couple almost, almost being decapitated, people being strangled, people being shot, bodies dumped here and there. It's really sad. It's really tragic. And it's really scary. But the fact that these crimes have never been solved and that there is a potential for either several, several fucking killers or almost scarier probably is scarier an insane rogue lone wolf fucking serial killer that murdered a shit ton of people and seems to have just gotten away with it there's oh they could still be out there lurking right now they could be out there right now that's a really fucking scary story Have you had a really fucking scary experience? Have you seen a ghost? Have you been on a macabre adventure? Would you like to share it on air? Would you like for us to tell that story? Or you just have something horrid that you would like for us to talk about? Head over to PellHorseMediaCo.com. Use the contact form to let us know all about it. Make sure that you subscribe. New episodes come out every single Friday. We look forward to continuing this creepy, crawly, morbid, macabre, and grotesque adventure with you, the listener. We love you and we will see you soon. Thank you for joining us today on our trip into the dark. We hope that you join us again next week 
for all things horror, all things macabre, all things grotesque, here on Really Fucking Scary